Hey everybody, my name is Nate Luby. I go by Nate in the Wild on the internet, and I am a travel landscape astrophotographer, I suppose you could say. And these are my five tips for getting started with astrophotography. So tip number one, you're going to want a wide lens, which I know sounds kind of confusing because that can refer to two different aspects of the lens, but in this case, I mean both of them. You want a wide lens in terms of your focal length. I love to shoot between 24 and 14 millimeters. Honestly, for the Milky Way, the wider the better it seems to be. Uh, for things like Aurora Borealis, I find 20 to 24 millimeters to be beautiful. You also want a wide lens in terms of the aperture, and in this case, as wide as you can possibly get it. There is no wrong way to do this. Uh, F1.8 is way more light than F2.8, and there's some lenses you'll find like a 24 millimeter F1.4 that's fantastic. You're gonna get a ton of light in there, and when you're shooting at night, that's really the name of the game. Everything we do is all about maximizing the amount of light getting into your camera. Following up on that, tip number two uh, is going to also be about getting more light into your camera. So we're going to raise our ISO pretty dang high, a lot higher than you probably are comfortable with if you've never shot Astra before. I find myself frequently around ISO 3200 to 4000, assuming that you have a lens with a fairly wide aperture. Beyond that, we're going to do a very long exposure, so a very slow shutter speed. Now, the general rule of thumb in the astrophotography world is called the 500 rule, where you take 500 and you divide it by your focal length. Now, with high resolution modern sensors, that doesn't actually tend to really work out super well. So I do the 300 rule. Um, I shoot with a camera with over 40 megapixels. And so using the 500 rule, I will see star trails. You'll actually see the movement of the stars caused by the rotating Earth. So I use the 300 rule. So for example, uh, 300 divided by, say I'm using a 20 millimeter lens, 300 divided by 20 millimeters is a 15 second exposure. Um, so with my, for example, my Sony 20 millimeter F1.8, I will take a 15 second exposure and I will still have nice sharp stars. If I use the 500 rule, that actually 500 divided by 20 is 25 seconds. It's too long with these high resolution cameras and you'll start to see streaks as the stars move. So again, high ISO and a long shutter speed, about 15 seconds if you're in the 20 millimeter focal length. Tip number three is for focusing your camera. Again, the, the general rule of thumb is they say find the brightest star in the sky. I haven't found that to really work. Uh, with modern cameras, they're so good at raising the ISO, uh, especially you're gonna be in live mode if you use a DSLR. If you're shooting mirrorless, it's always in live mode. And so focusing on the brightest star, it's going to just look like a big white blob. And then as you focus, it's going to turn into a smaller white blob. So I like to focus on a medium-ish bright star, even towards the dimmer end. That way you're not getting this blowout. If there's any haze in the atmosphere, it'll be kind of like a glowing orb. A medium bright star will actually be a small little pinpoint. And as you focus that lens down, it'll actually turn into a tiny little, if you get it focused right and you have a really sharp lens, it'll be a square. You'll see it turn into an individual sharp pixel uh, shaped like a rectangle. And that's how you know you're at absolute maximum focus. Tip number four is a sturdy tripod. The number one thing that beginner photographers like to do is buy a, a cheaper tripod. I know that it's expensive. You just spent $2,000 on a, a camera and another $800 on a lens. Who wants to spend more money on something stupid like a tripod? But would you balance a $3,000 computer on a pair of chopsticks? Of course not. Buy a nice tripod. It, I know it kind of sucks, but spending two or three hundred dollars on a nice tripod can save you thousands of dollars down the line. And if you're out in any sort of wind or inclement weather, you're going to be very glad you spent that money because you're going to be able to get nice, crisp photos at night, no matter what. Uh, the last tip, tip number five, 
I like to use a shutter delay. So you can either set a timer on your camera or you can buy a remote trigger. There's really cool Bluetooth ones, Wi-Fi ones. Uh, if you're shooting somewhere cold, if you're shooting the Aurora Borealis, the Wi-Fi remote triggers are really cool because you can keep your hands in your jacket pocket and just trigger the shutter whenever things start to look cool and you don't even have to come out. Uh, but if you're somewhere warm and you're just shooting the Milky Way, the delay, the five second or the two second timer is really important for getting sharp photos because as you push that shutter button, um, your hand pushing the button will kind of move your camera a little bit and you'll get some streaks. Even if you feel like you're being really smooth with it, I promise you I've tried as hard as I can, you're still gonna get some little wobble. So I set a five second delay, I push the shutter and then I don't touch it while it sits on the tripod, everything comes stable and then it'll fire off the photo without moving at all and you're gonna get an amazing crisp image. I hope you liked my five tips for getting started in astrophotography. If there's any tips that you think a brand new astrophotographer should know, please leave them in the comments below. It's always good to expand this list and help a fellow photographer out. Thanks again for stopping by. My name is Nate in the Wild.